What's up 2J crew? My name is Richard Clark, Technical Service Advisor with 2J University. Today what we're going to go over is the proper way to wire the low voltage or control wiring on a Friedrich Breeze Universal Heat Pump. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, so once you open up the side of your Friedrich Breeze unit, this is what the control panel looks like right here. You have a black box which has a digital display on it. Right now I have an error code. That's because we're bench top and this is not an actual live unit. This is where you're going to get your error codes in the field if you have any. Right down here you're going to see uh, two banks of dip switches. We can go over those here in just a little bit. And then you have some selector buttons here. This is how you select what parameter that you'd like this display to show when there's no errors active. The main reason we're here today is going to be going over the low voltage and what I wanted to go over today quickly is what terminals are on this outdoor unit. You have a five terminal strip for your low voltage. You have C for common, B for your reversing valve because we do energize and heat on this unit. Y is going to be your compressor call. W is going to bring on your backup heat during defrost. You do not want to hook this up in a gas heat application, uh, only during electric heat. And then the SI terminal is Friedrich's proprietary terminal. And basically what that is, is a communicating terminal between indoor unit and outdoor unit if you have the matching Friedrich air handler. If you don't have that air handler, then you're not going to hook that SI terminal up. And then obviously off to the right, we have our high voltage terminal, L1 and L2, 240 volts in. Everybody, so I did want to briefly show you all what this looks like on paper, the wiring diagram you get with the outdoor unit when you get it. Um, this wiring diagram does show the connectable or the matching indoor air handler that Friedrich makes. Um, not a lot's going to change if you don't have that. We're going to cover that here in just a second. So we're going to start right up here at the thermostat. You see our very first terminal is W1. If you jump over here to the little key, you can see that W1 is exactly what it always has been. It's your call for auxiliary heat or it's your call for backup heat during defrost, okay? In order to get that backup heat during defrost, you have to have a W wire that comes from your outdoor unit to your indoor unit, okay? Your auxiliary heat's handled by the thermostat. Your backup heat during defrost is actually handled by your outdoor unit. Now, if you have gas backup heat, you do not want to have that W wire hooked up because you do not want backup heat during defrost in that situation. And if we kind of just run down the line here, the very next terminal you're going to see is going to be our B terminal. And our B terminal, if you run over here to the little key, is our reversing valve that is energized in heating, okay? A lot of people are used to the O terminal being the one that we use, which is energized in cooling and fails in heating. For this unit specifically, we are energizing in heating and failing in cooling. So make sure you set your thermostat up accordingly um, for the B terminal and not the O terminal. We keep running down here. The very next terminal we have is C, and you can see that we have... C at our thermostat, C at our indoor unit, and C at our outdoor unit. We are always going to have C at our outdoor unit and at our indoor unit. You may or may not have it on your thermostat. It's always recommended, but not 100% necessary. So if you don't have it at the thermostat, that's not a huge deal. You run down the line here, your very next terminal is going to be R. Now, on a traditional heat pump, you are going to have an R terminal at your outdoor unit. But you notice here that you do not. You only have your R terminal at your indoor unit and at your thermostat. The very next terminal you have is Y. Y has not changed at all. Here it does show it as a call for cooling. Uh, I think a better way to put that would be call for compressor uh, because during heat pump heating, you're going to be running your compressor. You're going to have 24 volts on your Y terminal, but you're also going to have 24 volts on your B because we energize in heating. So Y is going to be your call for compressor. You are going to have that Y at your thermostat and at your outdoor unit, you may or may not have a Y terminal on your air handler. If you have the matching breeze air handler, you're not going to have a Y terminal. If you have a different air handler and you have a Y terminal, go ahead and hook that up there. And the very last terminal on the thermostat itself that you're going to see is G. And we don't have a G on our outdoor unit, so you simply go straight from your thermostat to your indoor unit. I'm going to flip the script here. We're going to kind of run to the outdoor unit here to do the rest of this. So I'm going to mark the SI terminal in black just so it's really easy to see. So you got your SI terminal here that runs from your connectable air handler, your matching Friedrich Breeze air handler to your outdoor unit. 
If you don't have the matching Friedrich Breeze air handler, you're not going to wire an SI. It's that simple, okay? Everything else is pretty much going to stay the same. No matter what happens, these are the five terminals you're going to have on your Friedrich Breeze outdoor unit. They're the only five terminals you have to hook up from your outdoor unit to your indoor unit, okay? Or to your thermostat, depending on which wire it is. You have C for common, B for reversing valve, Y for your call for compressor, W is going to be your backup heat during defrost. Remember, that's only for electric heat. If you have gas backup heat, do not hook a wire on W on your outdoor unit. And then the very last wire is that SI terminal, only to be hooked up if you have the matching Friedrich Breeze air handler. And then again, we covered this a minute ago, but we have our L1 and L2 uh, at the outdoor unit, which is just your 240 volt power coming in. All right, everybody, now that we've kind of covered the low voltage stuff, I just wanted to briefly show you what this little digital control panel is all about. You have two banks of dip switches here. Make sure you follow the manual if you're going to change anything on these. They don't change a lot, but they do change some things. Um, make sure you also double check and know which switch bank you're on because switch bank number five is on the left. Switch bank number four is actually on the right. Um, and then you have these three buttons down here at the bottom. Those are to set your parameter code so you can display what you know different things are on the unit I'll bring the table up here in just a second but for instance if I wanted to see our target frequency our compressor I would change that to parameter code one and obviously right now I'm bench top I don't have any call for a compressor so my target frequency is zero lastly guys we just wanted to say thank you for watching we love training here at 2J University if you need anything else at all Here's the three TSAs and all three of our phone numbers. Feel free to reach out if you need anything. Check us out on www.2jsupply.com slash 2juniversity. And remember, the difference between a good technician and a great technician is training. Thanks.